Now, can I set up a used car dealership that one day might be like this one with a little bit of industry knowledge and the help of AI? Well, that is exactly what I plan to do in this new series of videos. This is the AI car dealership project. Now I've been writing about car dealers and the motor trade for nearly 20 years and I've finally decided to give this a go myself. It's something that I've always wanted to do and now with the help of AI I might actually be able to do it. I don't profess to be an AI expert in any sense, I'm certainly not a car dealer but coming to a car dealership like this it really does excite me. I do actually want this to work, I want it to be genuine but I want to see along the way how AI can help. So I've got three reasons why I wanted to do this project. The first one is hopefully it will be entertaining content. Hopefully you'll enjoy these videos and our readers will enjoy the stuff that I write about the industry too. Secondly, it gives me a real opportunity to actually see what's happening out there. It gives me a chance to do what my readers do uh, and give it a go. What better way to write about the industry and talk about the industry than actually being in it, doing it on a day-to-day -day basis. And thirdly, I might actually get a new business out of this. So how am I gonna use AI as part of this project? Well, if I'm honest, I don't actually know. It might be able to help me write the adverts. It might be able to help me set up the website. I want it to help me buy the cars. I plan to feed in as much data as I can and see where it leads me, see what it tells me to do as part of running this business. But the important thing is, I'm gonna be referring to ChatGPT or other forms of AI in the first instance. Ask it the question first and see what it says. Everywhere I turn at the moment, people seem to be using AI for pretty much everything. So I thought, what better way of starting a business than asking for its help? I know what you're probably thinking. Have I got some form of rough plan for this business? Well, I sort of have and I haven't. I know that I'm going to start it small and I'm going to start it here from home selling my first few cars, but this needs to be a proper, genuine car dealership business. So it's going to have to have a website. I want to offer warranties. I'd eventually like to offer finance. This needs to be right and proper and done like any other person selling cars would be from the start. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be leaning on people for support. I've been very fortunate that I've been running Car Dealer Magazine for 15 years now. I've been talking to lots of car dealers and lots of suppliers to the motor trade and I've certainly been leaning on them for their expertise and their help as I get this project off the ground. But this needs to be genuine. I want it to be proper, I want it to feel real, even if I am using AI to help me do it. The next part of this project is securing the initial funding. And I've got quite a simple idea for that. My existing business, Car Dealer Magazine, is gonna pay my new car dealership business some money for videos like this one. But what I need to do to get that in place is I need to speak to our head of accounts, Kate, and convince her to send the money over. I need her to think this is a good idea and not just me. Let's give it a go. Can I tell you about my new business idea? Yes. Okay. So what I'm planning on doing is starting a used car dealership, but using AI as much as possible to help us do it. Right. <laughs> Silent speech volumes, Kate. <laughs> let, me right. let me explain. But well, the way I'm thinking about doing it is using this as a content generation exercise too. So we would create a large amount of videos for Car Dealer off the back of it um, and articles for Car Dealer website yep. uh, and thus drive lots of traffic and hopefully people engaging with the existing business uh, at the same time helping us launch a new business idea and a, and a new business. I'm going to set up a proper business and do it properly with a website and warranties and finance, etc. cetera. But um, we'll, we'll set it up properly. Um, and then that money will be put into buying more cars. Okay. We will be able to write about the industry from, you know, right from, from the very fact that we're actually doing it and out there ourselves. Um, and I'd like to get it to a stage where AI and, and people are running it and, and running it on, on its own two feet. So it's that's my sort of idea. 
So can you give me some money? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I I suppose the only thing is that, you know, it doesn't look as if, apart from the learning part, you'll be able to do a huge amount before... Well, I mean, my plan is to start it sort of like... This you know, afternoon. Well, yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, well, I already have started it, in effect. But, yeah, so I think, you know, the plan is to just, is to get, is to get cracking with it, really, and see where it leads us. Um, I don't know until I try. Um, Absolutely. And I think if it is a spectacular failure, maybe it will just get people laughing at me on YouTube. I mean, so so be it. Um, I think it will be, it will be fun to have, be fun to have a go. He's still there. Well, following that uh, hugely successful pitch, it was time to start using ChatGPT for the first time with a little bit of help from car dealer's John Ray. So is that it? I'm on. This thing's on. You're on. Okay, message ChatGPT. Um, I want to start a used car dealership in the UK. Do you think that's a good idea? Starting a used car dealership in the UK can be a good idea, but it depends on the various factors. Here's some considerations. Market demand. Research the demand for used cars in your target area. Competition. Assess the competition in your area. Location. A dealership in a location with high visibility and traffic can attract more customers, which is interesting because that's one of the things that the dealers told me when I was talking to them. Uh, online presence. Consider creating a strong online presence. Economic climate. Be aware of the current economic climate and how it may affect consumer spending. Sustainability trends. With increased focus on sustainability, consider the rising demand for electric and hybrid vehicles. This is scarily good. Um, thanks for your help. I mean, do you have to be polite to chat? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I should call my car, used car dealership, which will be powered with your help? Choosing a name for your used car dealership is an important decision as it will be a significant part of your brand identity given that you want to highlight the partnership with my assistants here are some creative name suggestions oh my god <laughs> this is autopilot cars tech drive autos smart wheel motors mm. future drive select uh. guided gears auto ai auto experts oh quite like that one can i have some more ideas for the name so it's instantly come up with this like far faster than i could have done it drive smart cars and it, each time it gives you a reason as to why you should use it drive smart cars implies a smart informed approach to buying cars tech trend motors future forward cars insight cars drive wise motors clever car collection mm. indicates a clever and thoughtful approach to car sales don't actually hate that one clever car collection so I'm going to say to it, my favourite name so far is this, the Clever Car Collection. Can you come up with more like this? Smart Choice Motors. It sounds like I'm winning out, reading out the winners for the Used Car Awards. 20, it does. 20, it 20, does. 35, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, right, Drive Select. From Nantwich. Wise Wheels Hub. Insight Autos. Birmingham. <laughs> My least favourite so far, Bright Auto Bazaar. <laughs> it sounds like it's at a covered market. <laughs> prudent Wheels Plaza. It suggests prudent and wise decisions in car purchases. <laughs> I don't know. I quite like the clever car collection so far. Can I can I suggest some other just to get try and understand its view yeah. of everything? Yeah. I think you should ask it, for example. Mm -hmm. If I was going to set up a used car dealership in the UK, where would I set it up? So my colleague John has some questions for you. Thank you. Where in the UK you would set up a used car dealership? Hi, John. I wish you said that. It's not doing that. It's now wondering what a John is. <laughs> it is. It's still thinking. I mean, you've really stumped it. No, nothing. Oh, he's back. Selecting the right location for a used car dealership in the UK for maximum effectiveness and profit involves considering several key factors. One, 
population density. Areas with higher population density, like major cities or suburbs, often provide a larger customer base. Cities like London, Manchester, Birmingham, Leeds and Glasgow could be prime locations due to their sizable populations. Economic activity. Look for areas with robust economic activity. Regions with a strong job market tend to have more people with disposable income, which can translate into potential car buyers. Pretty good point, isn't it? Competition. While a certain level of competition indicates a healthy market, overly saturated areas might be challenging. It's essential to find a balance. Demographics. Understand the local demographics. Different areas may have varying preferences in terms of car types, models and price points. Proximity to suppliers and partners. Being close to car auctions, trade networks and supply sources can reduce logistics costs and improve inventory turnover. I mean, that is how does it know that? That's crazy. Um, market trends. Some areas might be more receptive to trends like electric vehicles, the specific car brands. Given these factors, urban and suburban areas in and around major cities could be ideal, balancing population density with accessibility and economic activity. However, the final decision is yours. Sure. Uh, final decision should be based on detailed local market research. I mean, this is honestly really scary how it knows all this stuff. I mean, some of those things are very, very sensible things to consider. I mean, how does it know that being based near trade networks and car auctions and other supply sources will reduce logistic costs and improve inventory turnover. I mean, that is a key thing, isn't it? It is. But to take your point on the, the auction front, aside from whether it actually makes it cheaper to be near an auction house or not, because I'm not sure that's strictly... Well, you don't have to pay for a transportation then, do you? If, you're near, if you live next door to BCA Blackbush, you can just go and walk next door and pick the car up. Well, you can, but that's assuming BCA Blackbush have enough of the right stock for you, you see, as opposed mm. to, you know, you're not necessarily going to get it all from one site. True, but still no. helpful, helpful consideration. It's raised some good It's raised some good points there. I thought that's better than I thought it was going to be. I was hoping it would just say, like, you know, I don't know, do it in Chelmsford or something. Blood can you be more specific? Well, no, I'm going to ask it about, oh, no, I'm, we're going to launch it in Gosport, so I'm going to ask in Gosport. Uh, I am based in Gosport. Do you think that could work well john setting up a used car dealership in gosport hampshire could certainly work but as with any business venture it's important to consider carefully various local factors he's obviously been to gosport <laughs> local market demand access to demand for used cars in gosport population and demographics gosport while not as large as major cities has a reasonable population Competition, research... What does that mean? A reasonable population. Local accessibility in Gosport. Consider a location that's easily accessible to residents, ideally with good visibility and traffic. Community engagement. Be lo being local, you might already have community ties, which can be a significant advantage. Regulatory compliance. Partnerships and supply chain. Uh, After-sales services. In summary, while Gosport may not have the population density of larger cities... Its local market can still offer opportunities, especially if you leverage your local knowledge and networks. What? How do I start my yeah, what car dealership? How do should I, I start? To take to start this used car dealership. It involves several key steps. To conduct market research. I don't want to do that. I just don't. I mean, that is a little bit Alan Sugar, The Apprentice, isn't it? When you send Excuse me. Would equipment. you consider buying a car from me if I was to set up just over there? <laughs> uh, yeah, we asked a man in the street in Gospel outside Greg's, and he didn't want to buy it, but we decided to set it up anyway. <laughs> uh, develop a detailed business plan. Sort of done that. Uh, secure financing. Choose a suitable location. My driveway for now. Um, purchase insurance. Set up your dealership, uh, property set up, prepare your lot, showroom and office space, acquire inventory. This is a fair point. Where are you going to actually conduct um, <laughs> business? You know, like your driveway is fine, but where's are you going to put a porter cab in there as well? No. <laughs> or are you going to invite them in? Well, I don't know. You know, to do all the paperwork and take well, the. I, I honestly don't know. I'm going to just, I mean, how do people normally do? They probably do, don't they? Come in for a cup of tea and we'll go through over the paperwork. Um, 
I'm not sure. I, I mean, I rapidly want to have a dealership. I rapidly want to have a site, but this needs to start somewhere and we need to build up the capital. So I need to start doing it from home, but I want to do it properly. It's going to have to have the right at the start, business set up, offer offer warranties, you know, you know, put a warranty on the car. It needs to be done properly. It's, it's finished with a word of warning. Starting the used car dealership requires careful planning, significant investment and attention to detail. But with a well thought out approach and focus on integrating AI, it can be a successful and rewarding venture. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's do, let's do it. So do you know what? I'm feeling pretty positive about this now. I've chatted to quite a few people on the phone and as part of this video. I've had a good play with ChatGPT and it sort of feels like this might work. It's not going to be easy. I don't know enough about selling cars. I certainly don't know enough about AI, but I'm certainly willing to give it a go. And I think that's what is important. There's going to be a lot of admin to do. There's going to be a lot of legwork to do and there's a lot of learning, but it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. And hopefully it's going to be pretty entertaining too. Can you help produce an intro production to my video interview with Mike Brewer? Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, I'm your name and today I have the immense pleasure of hosting a very special guest on our channel, a true legend in the world of cars, Mr. Mike Brewer. And he's also a successful entrepreneur with his own used car dealership. Shift to Mike Brewer. Mike Brewer. Mike, it's an honour to have you here. Turn to address the audience. In today's uh, conversation, uh, we're going to be delving into the topic that's close to both our hearts, the world of used car dealerships. We're doomed. We're doomed. <laughs> we are. We are, we are so doomed. Yeah, yeah, are doomed. We are absolutely yeah. doomed. 